What's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the iUniker 3.5 inch touchscreen 60fps display for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now unfortunately this does not use HDMI like the older ones for the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 3B+. And those screens are not compatible with the new Raspberry Pi 4 because we have micro HDMI on this thing. Hopefully down the road somebody will release an IPS HDMI display for the Pi 4, but for now we'll have to use the GPIO, and I have seen this in action. It is running at 60 FPS. I haven't seen any screen tearing at all, and it looks pretty good. Now this kit does include a stacking acrylic case, heat sinks for the CPU, RAM, and USB controller, plus we get a fan. And one of the cool things about this fan setup is it's not constantly on. When the CPU hits a certain temperature, the fan will turn on and then shut off as soon as it's cool enough. This kit is available on Amazon for $32.99. Just keep in mind it does not include a Raspberry Pi 4, but it will work with the 1 gig, 2 gig, and 4 gigabyte version of the Pi 4. And yes, you will need to run a script to get this up and running, but it's super easy. So in this video, I'm going to be using this in Raspbian. We're also going to test it with RetroPie. I'll do a quick assembly, we'll do the driver install, and then we'll see how this thing performs. The kit comes with everything you'll need to get up and running. You'll get the acrylic case, and this does have a film on it. I just don't like pulling it off because this acrylic scratches up really easily. But this is what's known as a stacking case, and they do have full instructions over on the website in case you get lost. So I personally don't really like touchscreens with the Raspberry Pi, with any Raspberry Pi operating system really. And using a small touchscreen like this with Raspbian can be a pain. Where these screens really shine, in my opinion, is retro gaming, and we will get into that. So I have the bottom portion of the case on, now it's time to add the heat sinks. Like I mentioned, it comes with three aluminum heat sinks, one for the CPU, one for the RAM chip, and one for the USB controller. Before I put the top section of the case on, we need to mount the fan. On the bottom of the screen itself, there is a connector for the fan, and this is set up to automatically turn on and shut off when the CPU gets hot enough or cool enough. So it's not running continuously. Mounting the fan is easy, it comes with the screws, and I'm going to put the screws with the Phillips head side up, so we have the nut on the bottom. Once the fan is mounted to the top plate, we're going to secure the top section of the case onto the rest of the Raspberry Pi 4. There's four little brass standoffs to hold everything together. Now it's time to plug in the fan to the back of the screen, and plug the screen into the GPIO connection on the Raspberry Pi 4. So it's all mounted up. I mean, it's a really simple setup process, but we still have that driver to install. So we're gonna go over that real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and install the driver. Now I have installed Raspbian. This is the latest version, it's fully up to date. When you get your kit, you'll get a little tag that shows you exactly which website you need to go to. And there are full instructions here, but I'm gonna go over them real quick. The next thing we need to do is clone the driver to the Raspberry Pi from their GitHub. This is gonna download the script that we need to install to get this up and running. It only takes a few seconds. So now that we have that clone, we need to CD into that new driver directory. We're gonna point our terminal to that directory. And now we just need to run the auto install.sh that was downloaded with the packages. And that's it. Everything's installed, we just need to do a reboot. You can type in sudo reboot, and when the Raspberry Pi reboots, your 3.5 inch touchscreen will be functional. So we now have the unit assembled, we have the driver installed. As you can see, it definitely adds some bulk to the Raspberry Pi 4, but I expected it because we're adding a screen to the top of the Pi. Let's go ahead and move over to the Raspbian operating system and see how this thing functions, and then we'll get into a little bit of retro gaming. So here it is. The touchscreen sensitivity is great. You can calibrate it from within the Raspbian operating system. You do have an on-screen keyboard with this driver installed and the stylus works, or you could use your finger for touch. The screen can also be rotated by editing the config.txt file. But like I said, this operating system really isn't meant for a screen this small. Navigating the system with touch is easy enough, but when it comes to like web browsing and things like that, the on-screen keyboard is super small and it's just kind of hard to get around with several screens opened up. But this screen is great with other operating systems or specific apps that work better on smaller screens, like monitoring systems. And if you were interested in running your Raspberry Pi as, let's say, a server, headless, now having a headless server is really awesome. You can log in from another device to see what's going on. But if you added this screen, it's not going to add that much more power consumption. And you'll always have that display so you can check the information. But for retro gaming, a small screen like this works pretty well. I would like to add a battery to this setup. 
but right now I have my GameSir G3S controller with the mount. The Pi is plugged into the wall, but as you can see, I'm running RetroPie, and we'll get into a little bit of testing. I haven't noticed any screen tearing, and it's definitely running at 60 FPS, but unfortunately, there is no sound built into this setup. So as you can see, it functions quite well with RetroPie, and I can't wait till the guys over at RetroPie release an official image. So overall, the screen does function well. I really wouldn't recommend this if you want to run, let's say, a full-fledged desktop operating system on the Raspberry Pi. Even a 5-inch screen is a little too small. I would at least go with the 7. But for certain projects, the iUniker 3.5-inch screen could definitely come in handy. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave links in the description. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.